Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. <laughs> David, what happened? Is something wrong? What happened? I fell. That's what happened. Since they took the carpets out yesterday, this floor is less like a bedroom than it is like a skating rink. Did you hurt yourself? Are you all right? What were you doing out of bed anyway? David, are you hurt? Nothing that won't heal by itself. You'd better be careful when you get out of bed. If I never knew why people use carpets, I know now. What are you doing out of bed? I'm getting up. It's morning. Good morning, Mrs. Norton. Morning. We just went to bed. That bright yellow light you see seeping through the window. That's not the moon or a flashlight. That, madame, is the sun. It is morning. Must be very early. Half past six. Half past six? Mm Mm-hmm. Good morning. Good night. Thought you were going to be a real farmhand. Oh, Thought you were going to get up every morning at five o'clock and milk the cow. What are you getting up for at this early hour? I'm trying to get ready for tonight. Do a little packing. For tonight? Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh, I just remembered Mr. Carrington is coming. Hey, David, that's awful. What are we going to do without any furniture? I must say, it it does look kind of barren in the living room. It does. <laughs> I didn't know how big it was until they took out the furniture. It's wonderful for dancing. Yes, except they didn't leave us the radio. Oh. I wish I'd never invited him to New York in the first place. But I had to go and invite him for dinner. Only one thing to do, and that is take him out to dinner. We'll have to get all dressed up. All dressed up? Mm -hmm. Our evening clothes are packed already. Now you know why I'm getting up early. You were going to unpack them? That's right. (laughs) And have my dinner jacket pressed. Probably needs pressing. They're in the trunk at the bottom of everything. That's why I got up at 6.30. You have to take everything out and put it all back in again. You certainly were in a hurry to pack our clothes. But I didn't know the furniture was going to be moved yesterday. And the express man is coming for the trunks tomorrow morning, first thing. Oh, that's fine. Then we'll have to spend the whole night after we're through with Mr. Carrington putting everything back in the trunks again. I don't see why we have to take our good clothes to Connecticut anyway. (laughs) Sometimes I think that you think that Connecticut isn't right next to New York at all. (laughs) Say that again. (laughs) Anyway, we'd better take along our evening clothes to Eastbrook. Maybe someday there'll be a masquerade and we can go as city folks. Maybe I'd better get up, too. I'll do the unpacking, dear, and the repacking. I don't want you to be up all night after he goes. <gasps> When's he coming? We'll hear from him at the office. And as soon as I hear from him and know exactly what we're going to do, I'll call you. All right, darling. Well, David, we should be hearing from Victor Carrington at any moment. Yeah, I guess we should. We're very fortunate that Claudia asked him to come to New York that day. I- invited him, I should say. Mm, yeah, I guess we are. Oh, indeed. He's undoubtedly looking forward to it as a pleasant change from the ordinary routine of his trips to New York. A change, eh? Well, it will be that, all right. Round the formal banquets that a man of his position is invited to, the endless dinners at large houses, all the pomps and circumstances. Yes, that must become very tiring. Eating standing up can become very tiring, too. Oh, Yes, I must say, the buffet dinners that people like to serve at formal parties, balancing your plate in one hand and your knife in the other. (laughs) Better setting for a juggling act than a conversation. I wasn't thinking of a buffet supper, Roger. I was thinking And when Claudia described the farm to him on the telephone, well, you know how many of these captains of industry feel. The more they get out of life, the more they start to worry about the things they're missing. You mean you think Carrington would like to be moving to a farm himself? Part of him would, David. Believe me. One part of Victor Carrington's personality would like nothing better than to be moving to a farm. But life has a way of becoming very complicated if you let it. Mm, Sometimes it gets complicated without your letting it. 
Sometimes it just that's gets... That's true, David. That's why I think Carrington is coming to New York at Claudia's suggestion when he was not interested in coming at yours and mine. Then you think he expects to go to our house for dinner, huh? David, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if he were keeping his entire trip to New York a secret. Hmm? I think he's coming as a sort of sentimental pilgrimage oh. to put himself for a day or two in your place. To see how it feels, perhaps, to be looking forward to a life that's a bit fuller, a bit rounder, perhaps, than the gloriously successful one he's achieved for himself. Roger, I sincerely hope that you're wrong. You see, Roger, we can't have Carrington to dinner tonight. You can't? No. But, David, why not? Our furniture. We haven't got any. The moving people came yesterday and took it away. No furniture? All the better, David. All the better. That's precisely the sort of thing that I think Carrington would enjoy. Enjoy? Eating off the windowsill? Roger, aren't you being a little impractical? Impractical? Oh, I don't mean that no furniture is a pleasure. But you heard the way Claudia talked to him over the telephone the other day. I heard Claudia's end of the conversation. That's all one had to hear. But we we literally haven't got a table to eat from. We, we, we haven't got silverware. Nothing. Uh, David, David, don't let your respect for Mr. Carrington's position deprive him of a very great pleasure. Well, if we have to arrange a dinner... Nothing I... complicated. The simpler, the better. I don't care how simple. If we have to arrange a dinner, I'd better call Claudia right away. Good. I think you've made a very wise, a very kind decision. I'd feel a little sure of myself if you were Carrington, Roger, but, well... Didn't I just hear somebody coming in the outer office? I think so. That's probably Carrington. I'll be with you as soon as I get Claudia. Hello. Hello, David. Sound as though you're in a terrible hurry. Has Carrington come yet? What? Dinner here. But darling. Seven o'clock? Well, I, I I guess we can get a table from Bertha and, and chairs. And we've got two chairs in the bedroom. And we have the everyday china and the pots and the pans and and and, and we can use paper napkins. And I guess I can make hamburgers. And then we're going to have salad. And, uh, oh, I have some canned apricots, and, David, it's almost seven o'clock. Uh, Carrington will be here any minute, Claudia. You're marvelous. Don't you marvelous. think I'm very efficient? Aren't you surprised? I am never surprised when you do something well. <laughs> but what makes you think I like surprises? Darling, I, I hated to ask you to do this, but Roger made me feel that it was almost an act of charity. It's really better this way. Bertha helped, and she's going to cook dinner. And I packed away the evening clothes again, and everything looks wonderful. Doesn't it? Wonderful. It's as bare as the Yankee Stadium in February. <laughs> I hope Mr. Carrington thinks so. <laughs> oh, there he is now. It could be Bertha, I guess. Maybe she had to go downstairs and get French's dinner ready. I well, suppose everything's you go see ready, who it is. darling. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Norton. Well, hello. You're all, all dressed. Oh, dear. Perhaps I'm a little early. I was so anxious to get here and see you again. Well, please come in. We haven't any furniture. We're just moving. Yes, yeah, so your husband tells me. Oh, hello, Norton. Hello, Mr. Carrington. You really <laughs> shouldn't have dressed. I, I, I mean, it wasn't necessary to dress. I, I mean, I'm a little early, I suppose. There's no great hurry. You know, you'll have plenty of time to dress while I talk to your wife. I haven't seen her in uh, quite a while. But, but Mr. Carrington... These dinners never begin very promptly, either. We're uh, going to a dinner? Good heavens. Did I forget to tell you? I, I guess you did. Well, well, I was so interested in what you and Mr. Killian were telling me today, it must have completely slipped my mind. At least I thought my secretary had told... Am I going to? Are you going? I should say so. Why, you're going to sit right beside me. I expect to enjoy this dinner more than any dinner I've been to in quite some time. What uh, dinner is it, Mr. Carrington? It's our annual industry-wide banquet. Oh. Main reason I'm in New York is to attend it. Is it a very big dinner? Very big and very important. 
Fine opportunity for your husband to meet some men with problems similar to mine. Next year, I think our freight terminal will be the sensation of the banquet. I'll expect your husband to give an address. David, I, I think you better start getting dressed. Dressed? Uh, uh, dress. Uh, Claudia, where did you put my... They're uh, at the bottom. At the bottom? Will you need any help? No, I, I, I can manage. We, uh, we haven't got much time at that, Norton. When you're ready, we can talk freight terminal while Claudia dresses. I'll uh, be right back just as soon as I can find my... Well, well, it certainly is nice to see you again. Your husband is a fine architect. He's done wonderful things to our farm, Mr. Carrington. I, I hope you'll come to see it sometime soon. Well, farms are out of my line, and I'm surprised that you don't find them a little out of yours. Out of our line? Well, I'd say that you were a little too sophisticated for farm life. You're real New Yorkers, I think. But we're both looking forward to... We can hardly wait. Here, I forget to tell your husband that we're going to a formal banquet, and it doesn't seem to bother him or you a bit. <laughs> it doesn't? Eh, you're just perfectly casual about it, both of you. Banquets or farming, doesn't matter. You take both of them right in your stride. Yes, yes. For you New Yorkers, everything is a party. <laughs> oh, uh, what was that? I think I'd better go and see. I excuse me? Uh, please hurry back. There's a great deal more I want to say before I, uh... David, what happened? Oh, nothing much. I just pushed over a small trunk. But the evening clothes aren't in that one. They're in the other one. That steamer trunk? At the bottom. I'll push it over here. Oh, I hope he isn't getting impatient. He's going to introduce you to some very important people. On the bottom? Yes. Why did you have to put my dinner jacket on the bottom? He said you wouldn't wear it for years in Connecticut. Not till we go to a fancy dress party, remember? Well, here goes. Oh, now, don't, don't make too much mess, Well, darling. we can't keep Carrington waiting. Your shoes are in the other trunk, David. I'll, I'll get them out. Why did he have to have his industry-wide banquet tonight of all nights in the year? I... <laughs> he thinks we go to parties every night. I hope the next party we see is that fancy dress ball up at Eastbrook. Oh, why couldn't it have been a masquerade tonight? Then everything would have been perfect. In Connecticut, we'll be able to dress up like New Yorkers. And tonight, darling, we could go as a, as a couple of Yankees from the farm. <laughs> Um, dum, da, la, 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 la. Next time you're in a food store, notice how many women pause during marketing for ice cold Coca Cola. Having a Coke cooler right in the store makes it easy. Why don't you stop for Coke as a pleasant break in the day's routine? You'll probably find, as others do, that selection is easier when you shop refreshed. I guess Claudia and David are inside dressing, Mr. King. Oh, they'll be ready in a moment, Mr. Carrington. Claudia and David never take very long for anything. Ah, uh, quite a young couple. I like them. I'm surprised they're going to live on a farm. They didn't seem like that to me. Oh, they didn't seem like that at first to Claudia either. But she's gotten so she really loves the idea. You don't say. And Mrs. Brown, Claudia's mother, loves it too. Oh, is she moving up to Eastbrook with them too? Well, that problem hasn't been settled yet, but mm. I understand it's due tomorrow. I wonder whether Mrs. Brown is going to move with David and Claudia or not. Well, the pleasure's all hers. Hmm. They ought to be ready by now. Goodbye, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mr. Carrington. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.